We can turn down any corner and reach a dead end, whichever which way we like, and we can reverse the car and <laughs> pull exactly. right out and go somewhere else. So exactly. I'm happy to start wherever you guys are today. What are we? What was our plan? Uh, there's so much has happened that my my mind has turned to fudge this week. Where where what are we doing this week? Well, we were doing our soundtrack. Yes, yeah, soundtrack. Oh, Ooh, did yes. You, did you did you mean musical or just soundtrack is okay? No, soundtrack is um okay, perfect. Soundtracks. What I reckon too, yeah. Oh, I don't have okay. a hard copy of anything. Okay. Okay, that's all right. Have you got something you in your can... head? Well, I did. Um, we mentioned, yeah, well, you guys start because I'm always the one that tends to charge at the lead and then I use all of our airtime with my fucking hot air. So <laughs> <laughs> how about you guys? <laughs> you go for it. Go for it, Lee. Right. You go first, oh, Lee. Okay. Now, yeah. for some reason, Alana, you're very quiet for me. Oh, like it's you're true. like a little you actually are quiet for me too. Oh, that's weird. In the ether. I'm normal yeah. here. Uh, is that better? That's better. Yeah. 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 Just do there. Okay. Cool. Turn the echo on again. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. That's why we're doing an echo. Yeah, I'll edit it in the background. That's okay. Okay. Oh, then. Actually, okay. it's funny because now my echo delay is very delayed in yours, Alana. It seems to be coming out. Um, no, it's not. It's just stopped. I think Go it ahead. is. It's, it'll through. sort itself out. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, for, it's a bit hard with soundtracks because, um, you know, there's so many great, obviously. It just mm. goes without saying. But I picked one that is, uh, again, it stayed with me from the day this film came out. And it's actually... It's a favourite film and a favourite soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, that's hard. Like sometimes the soundtracks are great, um, but the film's average or vice versa. But this one is um, oh, Harris, Texas. That's what I was going to say. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but you've oh, got the hard copy, so you win. That's bloody awesome. Look at your hard copy, you rock ball. I'm so jealous. <laughs> well, um, yes, isn't it beautiful? It is. It's one of my fa most favourite films with Harry Dean Stanton and um, yeah. this. Uh, it's just a Kinski, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. And this beautiful soundtrack by Ry Cooter. So it, every time I listen to it, it evokes the emotion of the film. There's one particular piece, you know, that scene where you know he goes to her and she's sitting behind that wall and that in that place that she's working the at. The pink mohair and, jumper on. Oh, my God. And and he tells the story of their lives. And it's just oh. like every time I hear it and every time I hear that music, I cry. And it's and when? This came out in what? 19... What 98? Year? Surely. So, 98. No, eight, 85. 85. 85. 85. Oh so God. since 1985, this same piece of music makes me cry. And... I think that's very, very touching. But it's, it's beautiful. And that's mine. No, there you are. The beautiful Raikuda. And it's so simple, mm. you know, just the just just the simple musicianship and set, just beautiful compositions and, and everything's beautiful. There, there you I, go. I totally 100% agree. I used to, when I moved out of home at the grand old age of 16, <laughs> um, I had a 1940s apartment which had nothing else in it, no other stick of furniture, save for an old hi-fi stereo. And um, and I used to play that over and over and over again as though I wished it, I was willing it to be the soundtrack of my life at the time. But second to that soundtrack, I was playing Betty Blue. Oh, another beautiful, absolutely beautiful soundtrack and film. And both of which, for the same reasons that you mentioned, and I don't know if you've seen that one, Alana. Have you seen Betty Blue? I have. I'm going to admit I haven't seen either of them. <laughs> you have Ooh. so much to look forward yeah. to. Get on to um, it. Yeah, okay. Natasha Kinski and Beatrice Dahl were two of the most formidable actors of the 80s mm. for, 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 women, for women in um, in in romantic leads because they were kind of dark and, and disturbed, but mm. they were essentially the most visually, the most sensual and um, kind of decadent women, for their faces, full yeah. lips, yeah. Uh, deep, deep mirror pools for eyes. Yeah, I, I definitely know the movies because I remember putting the DVDs on the shelf at JB <laughs> and yeah. oh, the, oh, the okay, like, covers. Right. But, yeah, I haven't actually seen the movie, so I'm not going to lie. <laughs> No, that's yeah. actually a great thing that you have. Oh, look at that pretty picture. Just as you left, Lisa, the the image of your 
of your um, roses or whatever yeah, the flowers that are. Beautiful. There was oh. like that. That was the most beautiful still knife just there. Oh. Oh. Looks God, like I just realised they're, they're half dead. I shouldn't really have them in the background, shall I? It I think actually they kind of look more poignant yeah, for it. Yeah, very romantic. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> dead, the world Looks like one of, one of Tasha's forget. photos. Um, yeah, it does look like a Tash photo, yeah. actually. <laughs> um, this next week coming, sorry to digress, but this next week forward I've just got the projector and we're going to be featuring a lot of Tash's images oh, to perform gorgeous. against Yay. so we can create nature within our house Yay. so people can see the sky and see yes. simple things like a, a vase of beautiful roses that have maybe passed their time but that's why okay. they're beautiful have you seen Speaking of which i like a rose past my time can i tell you why i love beach style just yeah saying, go just for like, it I'll finish right well just in the same way that um that lisa mentioned she loved paris texas um i had a um i had a love who was larger than life actually at the time and and, and when I look back at it now, it was all a bit silly and it was a bit immature, but the one thing that he did do, which was the most probably the most seductive thing a man has ever done, he could quote the whole Harry Dean Stanton poem at me. Oh, wow. And oh. so he, we would lie down on a Sunday afternoon sometime, you know, like, and he would just, well, I knew this girl. And then oh, suddenly. Oh, wow. I know. And, and, and he sort of, like, kept me engaged in the relationship by using this prop, which was kind of a little bit unfair, actually, because I was so gullible and so I was Gunner. so wishing to be. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, anyway, Beatrice uh, was playing a role in Betty Blue, which is a little bit, again, a similarly about a fan. Um, and the fan is in love with the, um, the muse, but she is desperate to do away with herself. She, she has no care or concern for anyone and doesn't love life and doesn't want to stay in the game of life. And and the music, it's this French sort of, um, it's what I kind of call like, um, it's where Serge Gainsbourg left, I think, us with, which is that sense of how music can be sexy. Mm-hmm. But then and the, but then there's that, that French uh, impressionist kind of piano playing, people like... Um, Anyone from the 20s or the, even early in that, actually, the turn of the century, um, there were um, – who wrote Geonipides? Anybody have a clue? That's that. Uh, uh, was it Sati? Sati. Eric Sati, Debussy, Rachmaninoff, and then later there was Jacques Brel and, and then Serge. So, again, we're talking about bloodline. Yeah. No one could make the French honour solitude and destitute – as well as that kind of style of piano playing and composition. Mm-hmm. And it's in that album. Yeah, it's yeah. in the album. Well, and it's a, that whole French thing of chanson, you know, that that mm. the particular way they have of, of communicating, you know, through song and through instrumentation, mm. uh, that kind of melancholy and emotion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, there's a sort of a crop of films and film soundtracks around that time, like I just thought of Blue Velvet, and um, which is another, you know, very dark, Strange film, but a beautiful soundtrack, and um, mm. and all that Twin Peaks stuff, the Angelo Badalamenti soundtracks, you know, really dark. Well, and even like a, a, a maybe a more Midwest Americana um, was Baghdad Cafe. Oh, because I, I I sat I sat there right, and I'll, I'll never forget. Have you seen this film? I hope you're taking notes there, Alana, because we're going to do a big sitting, <laughs> and we're going to give yeah, every movie one after the other after the other. Um, it opens this one song, Alana, mm-hmm. and there's this, the slowest, like, like it's like watching uh, watching a, a maple syrup pouring it down um, onto um, a little river and watching a little fly land on top of it, as slow as it would take for that little river to come from the mouth of the jar out down to your place. I'm just saying it's slow. <laughs> and yeah. slow and treacly. Slow and treacly. Yeah. And there's this there's this chick whose voice is all I can say is when I sat in the cinema I heard this line. I'm calling you. I just burst into tears. With like, with a visceral 
what the fuck is that? <laughs> and then the movie started. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was epic. Yeah. No, it's it, it, it's it's silence and noise all at the same time. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Awesome. And what about you, little lamb, with your new baby there? We're all yeah. dog lovers and dog mothers now. Yeah. Oh, Man. isn't you beautiful? Yeah. Mine is uh, Baz Luhrmann's The Great Gatsby. Oh, oh, oh good call. Yeah. Ooh, throwing it down. Yeah. Trying to bring um, a bit of new blood. A bit, bit modern, yeah. but, um, yeah, mainly because I absolutely love um, – like just a mix of different artists that he's used in it doing completely different sounds to what they normally do. Um, mm. Like, but then also having like that really Australian thing coming back, um, back in with Gautier and, and um, the rest of them, but especially, uh, where is it? Especially the Brian Ferry orchestra doing mm. Crazy in Love. And then he does Love is the Drug. Um, mm. and I just think, yeah, that, that version that he does of Love is the Drug is just like, I can listen to that without the movie over and over and over again. And like, I love that song. Um, but the way they do it with that real, um, 1920s jazz feel, but then still the modern Jay-Z twist on it is just to me wild. And it's the same with, um, Moulin Rouge. I love that soundtrack because it's, got so much of that rhythm and that storytelling just within the music and and strictly ballroom I absolutely love Baz Luhrmann because I just think he's so inventive with every single side of filmmaking and understands the importance that music plays within a film um yeah he's my second favorite director um uh oh goodness what am I talking about um what's his name my first. Ridley but, Scott? No, no. Um, Pulp Fiction. Tarantino. Tarantino. Tarantino, mm, Tarantino mm, is my first. Yeah. Um, I love his soundtracks, but yeah, for some reason, mm. as far as soundtracks, Baz Luhrmann is my man. I love yeah. him. Love oh, that's him. funny you should mention the relationship between directors and the choice of music because I actually think those two things are uh, categorically um, undivided. They are exactly the the whole reason, the whole beginning and the end of how a great film, and mm. I think a lot of a lot of movies are written from the music forward first. Mm. But even, um, I, mm. oh, sorry, you go. No, I, well, Luc Besson, for instance, who mm. did Fifth Element, right? But Luc Besson, I believe, was Betty Blue. Is that yeah, correct? yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a big influence and, of Betty Blue. Yeah, and, and when, what was really weird in Fifth Element, and it sort of, it kind of, wasn't something I loved to begin with. Like when I first heard it, do you recall the scene with the opera singer where she went yeah. from opera and then it went into this crazy sort of hip hop music electronica? Yeah. And she was doing it. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, that's terrible coming from the school of Aretha Franklin. Yeah. I was like, that just sounds awful. Like this yeah. pixelated vocalizing through a, um, a kind of like a, a music oh. moog or something. Mm. And, but but there you go. But since then now, it's ma it's sort of making more sense now that music has become more future based, mm. and that we will hear that relationship in, say, someone like Baz Luhrmann. Yeah, I, I just think the way he does um, future, past, present yeah. in the one is just quite masterful, and he always gets the right people. Like I remember, I was so excited to hear he was doing. Um, great Gatsby and then I heard he got Jay-Z on and I was like what this is weird like and then they're like oh Beyonce and I was like oh like what like is selling out on me <laughs> Christ's sake what is gonna happen to this movie and then I went and saw it and I, I remember leaving and my boyfriend at the time was like oh yeah it was all right because he was a filmmaker <sighs> And I was like, are you kidding? That was the best thing I've ever seen. I'm going again well, tomorrow. Like, I was just obsessed with that movie. I went and saw it five times in the cinemas. Wow. Well, um, just, yeah. And then, like, the soundtrack came out and I was the music and DVD coordinator at the time at JB and everyone was just like, enough with this damn soundtrack, Alana. <laughs> like, we've had um, enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, to my yeah. deep shame and chagrin, I have to tell you something, girls. Uh, and I think I may have told you this story before, Lisa, but um, yeah. 
a thousand light years ago, I was get, made it. I was I was given. I was I was called on a landline, which didn't exist in your time, Alana. But I did. it used to be this thing that you would sit on one single table yeah. in a hallway, yeah. and next, and it would be on top of generally speaking like a big yellow pages, which was a directory with every number. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Um, the phone rang and it was this voice saying, I'd love to have a meeting. I would love to discuss a project I'm working on. And, um, and it's about ballroom dancing. And I'm like, who would want to see a movie about ballroom? Oh, no. No. And I declined no. the offer to see it. No, no, no. The title no. chat no. was strictly no. ballroom. No, Kate. <laughs> What? And, and, and who did sing the title track? I can't even remember. Uh, I think Tara Marie's did in the end. Oh, she did. Oh, well, that's okay. That's because that's that's the film. Oh, bugger. And, and then... Oh, mate, I have never, ever, I mean, I've done some stupid fucking things in my life and career. <laughs> so it'll be one of the most stupid and fucked up things yeah. I've ever done. Mm. <gasps> that's crazy. Aww. Yeah, but I, that, just on Baz too, Romeo and Juliet is uh, that one yes. is my favorite. That's my favorite, and I and same. I love that soundtrack. The way and he didn't do it. He didn't sort of fuck around with the with the music like he did with Gatsby or Moulin yeah. Rouge. But the way he chose those songs, yeah, that Shakespeare story is so cool. Yeah, and yeah, the way they I led agree. into each other and just the yeah. choice, like that's what I think he's just so great at is just the leading and and really guiding the story with the music rather than an afterthought. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know that he actually, having seen his workbook of Romeo and Juliet, which was a terrific privilege, which was essentially it was like it was like a, um, you know, just one of these things, like a simple journal mm, yes. with cutouts and paintings and hand-printed things mm. and poems. And, I mean, he had, it was the most exciting thing to see um, this was before, so all of the storyboards were visually painted mm. with everyone within it before they went to, to, to shoot. Um, but to me, the most exciting thing for me on that Romeo and Juliet was uh, the scene with, um, I can't remember this, the character's name, the, the beautiful doomed character the black guy played. Oh, and he uh, had a, Altharia, Altharia? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh well, God, we should we should know. Gosh, no, we can, you can. Well, I don't know. No, uh, yeah, something. No, but it's like that. It was a beautiful name. Like such that. an an artistic interpretation. I, I yeah. think it's fair that <laughs> we, guess, we forget we which know. character the well, Shakespeare well, character yeah. is. <laughs> oh. That that was like pathos in a song with young blood, young young hearts run free, right? Mm. Yeah. Because there's that beautiful boy who had all of his life to live for. And then moments later was mm. slain, do you remember? Mm. And you're just like tears. Yeah. Of just how did it, Mercurio, Mercutio, Mercutio. That sounds more. I have to Google it. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> my, um, yeah. I, want, I wanted to also say um, that my, but the most heraldic moment for me uh, was through the goldfish bowl and with Desert. Oh, same. Same. They're so memorable, so beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hang on, Mercutio. Mercutio, yeah. you've got it. Oh, it was right, it was Mercutio. Oh, I pulled that yeah. out. I'm a small orifice. Oh, I like to say it's a small orifice. <laughs> <laughs> so, girls, you yeah. know, oh, I had, so romantic. did you have any um, stories? Uh, I had a story which I'll lead you into, and maybe you might think of one as well, where you saw a movie and then suddenly you saw something that was actually in real life that um, even galvanised the movie experience for you. For instance, like say you saw a film and, well, I'll give you an example. Um, I saw the movie that you mentioned first up, um, Paris, Texas, where it's a, um, it's kind of like a voyeuristic, ill-fated love. It's, it's a love that can never really be. And then one night I um, came home and it was like 4 a.m. in the morning and I turned on the television and there was a documentary about an artist. Now, I don't know whether I dreamt this or it actually happened, but there was an artist who had had an accident and he was a, a kind of older guy and he was married to a very, very young and a very, very beautiful woman. And the accident rendered him a quadriplegic um, and uh, also, and he was blind as well from the accident, which meant 
as an artist, he couldn't fulfil what he would do normally, which was to create these large installations and paintings and everything. And um, the, the, the wife was so young and so beautiful that he did this thing for her, which I'll never forget. He, he went and got the production crew to um, cover one whole wall, one whole room actually with whiteboard, and he went in and he painted, though we couldn't see, their story from beginning to end mm. in, in the room. He walked her through the room afterwards, like meaning he was sexy and, with, and he said, and now that is the story of our love and now I set you free because you can't, we can't be together anymore. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, my goodness. What a fabulous he film. Said, it was, was it? it was actually real. Life. It was a documentary. He said, "I was a doco." Oh, he goodness. said, "He he said this is where our love and our life began. I was a spirited and a athletic man, a painter, and a this." And he painted all of their love, and then he got to the end, and he said, "And now this is it. I I set you free." Oh, that's awful. Mm -hmm. But How it is Paris, Texas. It was like it, it was true. like these, you know, yeah. yeah. Any films yeah. like that 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 resonated for you and. Uh, we're a little bit prophetic. Yeah, um, Blue Valentine. Have you guys seen that? No. That so we, movie, who's in it? What's it about? Uh, it's, Isabel Rosalini, yeah? No, no, Ryan Gosling and um, uh, Michelle oh, Williams. No. Oh, I love her. Yeah, it's, oh, I just, I was literally destroyed for about a week afterwards, um, it's about this couple who, like, they fall madly, madly, madly in love um, at the start and the guy sort of does everything to make it work. And um, But they're just polar opposites. Um, and she, she falls out of love and um, is just mental with everything. And then... Uh, there's this scene where they go to like a hotel up like well after the kid that she had is old enough to be looked after and they go to this hotel to try and regain the flame and um, she like just lies down completely still and just completely apathetic and he's like I'm not like I'm not going to rape you and it was just the most gut-wrenching thing I'd ever seen and then it like goes to the end and they have this massive fight and he's like, I don't know, like, what have I done? What have I done? Like, all I've ever done is loved you and given you everything and um, like supported you in everything. And it was just the most gut-wrenching thing at, because there was something else happening in my life at the time that was similar and I just remember it destroying me for about a week. I was just like, I couldn't function properly for a week and I still I bought it on blu-ray as soon as it came out and I still haven't re-watched it because I'm just like I just can't <laughs> it's too close yeah full yeah. on wow wow well I can't really think of anything except for maybe um spinal tap yeah <laughs> <laughs> take it to a level I'll move that <laughs> that's real life yeah well you'd have to deal with that you every have. day Lisa <laughs> in your job <laughs> Oh, oh my, my god, god. That, so that is one of my favorite films. And actually, the sound I could have I could have brought that soundtrack along, yeah. but it's actually pretty bad. But so funny, those guys. How could a bunch of actors and filmmakers get it get the music scene so right? Yeah. It never ceases to amaze me. It's just like they hit the nail on the head with that stuff. Yeah, it's so, so good. perfect. You know, so I guess in oh. a way they must have been such fans and had been around yeah. so many bands. Mm. And yeah. been in bands themselves and known how even yourself, like I've heard myself trying to find a harmony in a yeah. sea of, of <laughs> backstage, you know, in a, in a pinch trying to get that that Elvis harmony and it's horrible yeah. and you're going for the wrong fifth and it's meant to be a third and, a, and you know you sound ridiculous and you're going to go on stage and make a complete ass of yourself. But, you know, there's something about that loving triumph of Spinal Tap where... Uh, they prevail because they're too stupid to know otherwise. Mm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like the, they do. The, just, just the, just the horror of having the dimensions of that fucking stone Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I know. I've done I that. Know. I've fucking done that. I, I ordered a chandelier to come 
I wanted yeah. it to be, and I ordered it to be, again, you know, two and a half metres, and yeah. it came two and a half feet. No. <laughs> and it was oh, on the day of this God. tour, and it hang, it, I've got an image of it hanging above my head going, this is not what I called a fucking tour. <laughs> <what's> <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. And and Janine, you know, the girlfriend. I mean, isn't there always a girlfriend somewhere who's, you know, making the trying to make moves on, on the rest of the band, trying to trying to manage her guy, you know, just yeah. dumping yeah. everything up. Yes. <laughs> Janine, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Look, I don't know about you girls, but I mean when I was intimating before about things turning into life, I mean, my whole life has been to chase the, the perfect soundtrack to my life. I mean, I've written songs that I thought would or I hoped would document the changing times of my life. Um, I wondered if it was a, a movie that you particularly felt was personal that said, like, I, I guess you probably already said it really, what film would define you? Um, I I wonder. I wonder. Mm, I just have to think about that. that that's, that, I don't know, is there a film about someone who's incredibly dull? Oh, stop it. You're not just dull. Shut up. <laughs> You are so, oh, my God. No. You know I know. What? The Elephant Man. Shut up. <laughs> no. Which is a great which is a great film, actually. But, wow. yeah. No, but actually, do you know which film, and it's got nothing to do with the narrative within it, but when I met you, Lisa, I did, I was reminded of one of my favourite Fellini films, um, or was it Zeffirelli, called The Rose Tattoo. And oh. there's one of my favourite actors in it. Yeah. Uh, she is one of the fiercest, most courageous actors I've ever seen on screen. Um, she is a famous Italian actress. Um, beautiful. I love her. So truthful. Like, there's just not a shred of her that could it, could offer anything inauthentic. Like, um, so go and check out the Rose Tattoo. She's, she's what's her name again? Um, I can't think of any um, Italians apart from Sophia Loren. And what about Claudia Cardinale? Um, no, this well, she she's more oh, yeah. of the kind of like the I suppose the who's our British actress who we all love? Um, who's the sexy middle aged woman that? Um, oh, fuck, Helen, Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. Yeah, she's like the the Italian Hel Helen Mirren. You know, the thinking oh. the thinking man's crumpet, mm, as they yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great name. I will have to check that out. The rose tattoo. Yeah, the rose tattoo. Yeah. yeah. I can't. Yeah. Think. Can't I think know. of anything. Hard, isn't it? That's a. We have to. I have to think about that. That's a very good question. I like it. That's a challenge. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, which, for instance, yeah. which character did you most identify with? I know because. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I would like to think that I identified with a very famous character, but I think it's going to make me feel and sound like a wanker. But <laughs> when I first saw To Kill a Mockingbird, I really loved Jem. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, Scout. Is it Scout? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. Um, because I, being the only only girl of three boys, I felt like I was the story. I was the one who was watching their stories more than they were watching me. Does that does that sound weird? Like I felt like I was talking about like Jem would talk about her dad. Or scout, I can't remember. Um, and she was talking about him in the, you know, as though they were equal. Of course, she was only an eight-year-old kid. He was a forty-year-old man. But that's how I felt always around my brothers. Like I could see things, I could talk about them and discuss them as though they weren't even aware of what was going on in their lives. I could see when girls would move in and girls would move out, and I could see when high school was going to get them down. So and maybe to kill a mockingbird, I quite like that. Hmm. What about you? What about you, Alana? Got anything you can think of? Um, probably Belle from Beauty and the Beast. E any carnation? I of always, course you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course you do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I always felt like the little weirdo with the weird <laughs> parents, only <laughs> child, who uh, who goes off into their own little world and and has to try and tame the beast and uh, make them a better person and, uh, you know. That's uh, great. And, and try and be with within the musical of my own life and, and create um, ornaments into some sort of imaginary reality. <laughs> so, Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. 
Sorry. 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 Sorry.